Okay, you always wanted to know the name, the story, the beginning of why this podcast is called Hi Femme and who Hi Femme is. It sounded like way more intimidating than I had meant to be, but okay. So, first, DLDR. One time I went to this like art market and there was this sign, it was two hands and it was pink and in between the two hands it said hi femme and then and there's a weed <laughs> leaf in it. <laughs> and it was dumb like how am I gonna hide it when my mom misses me? And I'm not kidding I'm not kidding for that. And then um I really liked it. Then I moved out after my ex's place, and one day I was hanging out with him and this girl I was seeing, and um, and I was just like, you know what? You can have it because we both really liked smoking weed and being gay. And for me, it's just like someone wants me is like, oh, you're so high femme, like someone who's like uber feminine. Let's get it? It's joke, 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 joke. Aren't jokes funnier if you explain them? But that's kind of it. Kind of stole the name from a print I found. Gave it to a girl I liked. Gave my ex the middle finger. And then she made a dress, actually. Yeah, it's called High Fab, which has this stitch on the lips. And in the bucket says Hi. And then it says Femme. And then there's a mouth of a joint, and it's so cool. Like, it's just art coming from after art after art. All this art. And it could be, like, because I'm really into collaging and stuff. Um, sort of, like, and a lot of collaging is derivative work. And we could go on forever on another Wikipedia trip. Okay, part of me has to say that, like I said, because collaging is so big for me. One time, I went to see this this exhibition. It was called Group Therapy, and it was um, at this museum where um, the entry is always free, and it was like the most amazing exhibit. And I, s- and I just remember looking at mirror pictures and all these overlays, and that's kind of what started my love of um, collaging and scenes. Okay, and the thing is, you know, a collage is a zerative work, and, um, think of, like, hip-hop, or a song that mi- mixes, like, maybe news fads in the background. If any homie wants to use part of this podcast in a song, maybe I, maybe I will, but, you know, like mixing and stuff like that, and I'm not sure if we can do that anymore, um, because copyright keeps changing so much over the years, because Disney's evil, and um, it can be seen a lot, especially on like YouTube, um, since like. It looks like a lot of people doing video essays um, are being affected by it. Film criticism, thankfully, does not seem to be, but um, TV really poses a lot of, like, I like, you know, take down letters. I don't know, but it, it, it is constricting so much that it just sucks the life out of art, <laughs> you know, but I don't know, then I guess the one person to uh, this guy uh, Jeff Koons I don't know. Oh, look, he... 
he was sued over copyright infringement and he won well um international I have an international sniffer. Okay, all right. Okay, you weirdo. Anyway, um, yeah, there was a case. So visually collaging, especially like if they seem it to be part of the foo foo high art or academic world, um, it's fine. And. But I don't know with other stuff, visually as well, what can you do? But then I guess this is where like fair, like, you know, fair use or common, <laughs> what's not the other one? Like, um, copyright, like common copyright, I don't know. I mean, oh my God. At least you'll never be as embarrassing as uh, that dude trying to sell you on getting an NFT, oh my god. That's, that's what's truly a nightmare and should be dusted. So, but after defending my stealing of work, I mean, I'm sure she's not the first person to make this connection. I actually tried to argue with someone that, um, weed and being gay are definitely connected that it's like a cultural thing it's like you know gay people walk too fast i mean like i walk very slow so i was trying to think of like visual politics and my signifiers like um you know having dyed hair which i've had in a while but i also kind of see that it's like my arc as a never grown up social justice warrior but it's also lavender now. Um, I have a denim jacket. Of course I do. I also draw my kid. Um, yeah. God. That's that. Okay, I hear bisexual girls are obsessed with charging their phones. I don't know why, but that is kind of true. That I think that there is a community of weed and, um, and the sapphic community. I just think there is. So, that is, <laughs> that is, it's, it all fits together now. You see? Okay, so, but talk about the beginning. Um, this last time I got gummy bears and who remembers kind of like the intro um trailer for this you know podcast and I talk about me eating the gummy bear um so I guess that was also my first start as like maybe becoming a stone femme um but yeah in that in that story one of my former my former ex, like, um, my former ex makes it sound like I'm dating him right now and I'm not <laughs> my ex. Um, and the one I hate the least, we are just talking and I'm like, remember the good old times? I was like, yeah. And then I was like, getting high, eating cold pizza hot, watch her into Stellar, come up with an entire theory about Space Daddy, and also get super high and watch um, Bob's Burgers. I don't think I ever did watch Bob's Burgers after that breakup. Yeah, I don't think I did. Anyway, um. You're getting high watching Bob's Burgers. This is such a good time. I think I did it with another dude too. As a friend, as friends. You make 
you can make that out to be of whatever you want to make that out to be. But yeah, another friend was um is this her name? Arling. Um and when my ex broke up with me in kind of a really shitty way, like on my birthday and he still the least the least hit it on. Yeah, that's that's a low bar, friends. That's a bit low bar. Don't let yourself get to that bar. Just kidding, telling you to not let yourself get to that bar. It's victim blaming, and we don't do that here. Um, so, oh yeah, the gummy bears. They're gummy bombs. I don't know what's going to happen if um, they... <laughs> Some, someone out there, like, just catches it. Like, um... Spotify is gonna be like, we really care about content moderation now, and they're snagging me. They're pretty good. Like, I got a pretty, I got a pretty good high. Well, I was, I just ate one, ten milligrams, and now I am like, and I ate another gummy bear, and now I am uncomfortably high, which is, you know, right about the perfect place for me. Back to Carlay. So she was best friends with my ex, but then she felt like it was really shitty how he broke up with me, and we became friends, and that was kind of like, I don't want to say it's like my first face of my slutty faces, but I don't know. I was a 21-year-old kid who turned 22 and had never really done this. I never, I didn't really smoke weed until I was 21. Um... And anyway, it was nice bond. It was nice bonding with Carly. Like we would go to the, we would go to the bars in Phoenix, and um, there was this bar. It was like underground. God, I can't remember. But anyway, and then sometimes the um, I haven't been in the bar so long. I don't even rem remember what you call the people who are like guarding the door. Oh my god, bouncers! Yeah, they would just let us let us in. How cool! But also, um, which remind me of the song that the, the party party by uh, Justice. Please don't don't copyright don't copyright strike me Spotify and. Every time we just message each other, we're like, I love you. I love you. Love you. I mean, one time at, it was the one night stand gone weird and I started crying. And then she, like, told the guy to go away. We got high and then she slept me sleep in her bed. So, and my other friend Samantha, who I love so much, also has love under her and loves getting high and it's spam. See, I'm telling you, weed is part of the sapphic culture. Oh yeah. So yeah, the first time I ever got high, I was like 21. I was at my, this another ex, and this one's truly a piece of fucking shit. And I had his cousins and then I smoked weed and um, and then I remember, like, if I were to look at, and then looking at someone and just being so curious about their sandwich, I was like, what kind of sandwich is that? But then, like, totally, um, I would have asked that if had, even if I had not had to smoke some marijuana. And I still had problems not packing a pipe at one time. I was so nervous that this person would make fun of me that somehow by miracle I was able to just really pack the pipe and look like I was doing there's a reason why I do edibles over smoking okay also after the breakup with that piece of shit ex, his cousin took my side because one who wouldn't I promise I am not a friend stealer or family rover or whatever just very charming and likable. Um, that I came to Seattle to see them, and 
it got so high for like three days. Um, and I just remember my friend Fail and I would just go back and forth and we would all share the same pen. And then he always passes around. What a homie. Phil, shout out to you. Um, this pre before times where we could sit around and watch movies and smoke. Um, the, him and his wife, my other friend, would sit outside and smoke cigarettes and 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 when I was and in the same year, the 2016. Um, it was like three best days I spent that year and kind of my taste of Seattle and then I moved to Seattle which made buying weed a lot easier for me I am like a primary case of like if you legalize it and you make it easy more people will smoke it which I think would be a good thing or get it or whatever but, um, yeah, honestly, we just got so much easier to just buy edibles. Even though sometimes I wish, like, I could make my own. And no, no, no. Say, I don't say I can because I cannot. I cannot cook, and it just sounds really complicated, okay? It sounds a little scary. I don't know. If anyone's ever baked edibles, let me know because. That's the thing, too. I've never really had a homemade edible. Yeah, I don't think I ever had a homemade edible. Um, and one of the highest edibles I've ever gotten was, like, from Vancouver, B.C., where there was this, like, gray market for marijuana, where it wasn't, like, legal, but it was legal. Like, there were stores that were selling it that they weren't supposed to be selling it, and you had to go to the government store, which looked like an Apple store. Um anyway so then there i was i found this yeah like a 300 milligram edible and i don't remember the trip back to seattle now because i thought it wouldn't be that bad because i had also gotten gummies before and i was like i mean i felt like i was ripped off because i didn't feel that high and then i took the 300 milligram one and i was like oh my god yeah yeah um thankfully i made it back Gummies can be such a powerful way to deliver THC, THC, THC. but um, sometimes you gotta be careful. Or sometimes you'll be in Vancouver and get ripped off and feel like you just got like bag of candy or something. But there you have it. That is the genesis of high fam, and this is totally not a play on um neon and evangelion genesis which again my ex and my friend and my ex love um and he's always making references like mustn't run away mustn't run away mustn't run away i'm gonna see there's some good aspects in but i I've never watched that show, but I have read the entire TV trope pages about it. But I want to know if maybe you think, like, you know, is weed in sapphic culture? Or queer culture? Is it, like, intertwined? Um, just being gay and being stoned? Or, I think that's the answer. Have you, and, like, have you ever made your own out of all? like in the before times again pre-covid times um like or if you were watching Degrassi like me and you know I can't remember who got kicked out of university for making <laughs> a brownie like you know yeah people would make you know brownies and stuff and again I never I never had that experience tell me if you have had that experience thank you and goodbye for now, high fam.